I'm glad you're back. I imagine it's gonna take some time getting used to. You just gotta get yourself back out there. Palmer, you were all USA player two years in a row at Riverside? Yes, sir. The whole life's changed. First, um, congratulations and, and thank you um, for the opportunity to, you know, so to, to interview, talk to you about this amazing movie that you wrote, uh, Palmer. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I know he wrote you so much reaction and I'm shaking because not, not just because I'm talking to you, because of how much that mo the movie meant to me and how much I related to a lot of things that, that I saw in the movie. And, you know, I, I was doing my research for the interview and I, one of the things that you know took me by surprise while I was doing my research is that the, this, this, your story, you know, was blacklisted in 26, 26, 2016, right? 2016. So you know, I, and people, you know, people that live outside Hollywood don't understand what that means because then, then you know, black being blacklisting is kind of like a like it feels like a black like a, like a bad name for everything. But just you know, before diving into the story, because I, I got a lot, we got a lot to talk about. Explain what does blacklisting really mean? Because people feel it's like something wrong, but it's not. It's nothing wrong about it. Sure, it was started uh, many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, he might have been an assistant at the time and went on to be an executive. And this gentleman kept reading a lot of screenplays that he loved that weren't getting made into movies at the time. So he started what was called the blacklist. It was called he, he called it blacklist. And it was basically a list of all the best unproduced screenplays. So he'd send out an email to people within the industry and say, and say, tell me the best script that you read this year. And it, the criteria is that it could not have been made into a movie. So in 2016, um, my script, you have to be nominated by a certain amount of executives or studio heads or producers or whoever uh, that it's, you know, kind of like, there's a list of people um, and they have to submit, you know, they have to submit it and you have to have a certain amount of votes and um, Palmer was nominated and, and got on the blacklist. So it's an honor. It was a, yeah. it was a, it was a great honor to be on that list because some of my favorite movies that have mm -hmm. gone on um, to win awards and, and my, my type of uh, dramas, um, they've been on the blacklist. So I was very honored to have made it. Yeah, I mean that's 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 the, the first thing that you know I I was thinking like this is cool. I mean this is yeah. a good thing. I mean if the we got the movie got blacklisted, this is this is something really big that you know we can expect from this from this story. So and that's what we got. And 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 how did you? I don't. I think you know. I I, don't, I want to put I'm putting myself in your shoes, and I don't know how you wrote this movie because how what were you expecting for people to feel when they saw your movie because it's tough. I mean, it's really tough, everything that we, and it's real for me, to me, everything's real, it's real obviously, but but it's, it was really tough seeing everything, how it got obviously uh, shot in the final product. How did, you know, how did you come out to writing this story? How, what, you know, what struck so hard that you wanted to write this story? Thank you, great question. And, and I love that you love the movie and that you can relate to it and, um, God, where do I start? It started with the character, with the characters, um, and I had had a couple other films made prior to this, and I've had some, you know, I had writing assignments and had work optioned, and and um, what started was was the characters. I was um, around. Uh, sorry, I get a little distracted. I was around men who had spent some time in, in prison and had gotten out and had completely changed their lives. And these, part these particular gentlemen that I was meeting, it was due to alcoholism and drug addiction, um, which had spiraled out of control and that ended them in prison and then they got out. And I was a witness to their transformation of their lives and, and um, getting back in, involved with their families and being productive members of, of society. And um, I could relate to that. Um, and because I've had my own uh, struggles with, with, with alcohol and, and some consequences and have turned my life around in, in certain areas. So I wanted to write a guy like the men I was meeting. I was just so, I, I feel like it was God inspired. Um, and, uh, 
but I didn't know what the story was going to be. And I'm, I'm gay. I, I knew I was gay at, at a young age. I knew probably, I didn't know what it meant, but I knew at eight years old um, that, that, uh, that I was, I, I may not have known what that meant, but, mm -hmm. um, in my interests, like I was a little girl that always wanted to wear shoes that were a bit more masculine and boxy and that you typically find boys wearing. I played with, my sister played with dolls. I played with Tonka trucks. So, um, and there's some things in the movie that were said to me as, as a little girl, like Cheryl, you know, you're a little girl. And I said, yes. And this particular adult said to me, and I remember I was seven, eight years old. He goes, well, girls don't play with trucks and in the dirt. And I remember thinking, but I'm a girl. I don't, I didn't understand. And so anyway, I'm walking, I live in Los Angeles. I'm walking by the beach and I see this little boy playing and he reminded me of myself, everything that he was playing with, but he was playing with Barbie dolls and all these things. And, and I just remember thinking, you know, uh, you live in Los Angeles, you live in New York City, which I did, and, and people kind of leave you alone. It doesn't, you have to, don't have to necessarily fit in. And, and I just thought, well, what if this little boy lived somewhere where you were, um, you know, little boys were expected to play football or soccer or, or baseball or whatever, and he had no interest, like he wanted to be a princess. And then I just thought like, well, what would his life be like? And that was the moment where I realized the boy was gonna save the man, and then the man was gonna save the boy. And it was just that simple that, and it was important for me, for Sam to be a confident um, little boy who was comfortable in his skin, who was unapologetic, because for me, I related more to Palmer, who he's returning to a life where everyone knew him as his football star. Mm -hmm. And now he's getting out of prison and he's being completely judged. And he's at a very lost, empty, soulless place. And for mm -hmm. me, that was what was important that this little boy something so unexpected would completely change his life and give him a sense of fulfillment and self-esteem. And um, it was that simple. And I just knew I want, I, I'm like, I am writing this story. So, yeah. yeah so I, I think you, you, you answered, you know, one of my questions. So those characters were like um, inspired by one of them, what by, by, by yourself and other people around you, right? Absolutely. And, and I think that's why, you know, I've had, and it's interesting because a lot of dads respond so strongly to the material because it's, it is about, a, it's about being a parent and being mm -hmm. a father and, and being judged. And, um, but it came from individuals that I knew, like these were, uh, I, I think it, it's just very honest. And I think people responded to my script and um, because it was just very honest and, and, and whether you struggled with alcoholism or whether you went to, to prison, I think there were things within this character that different people could relate to, whether you relate to Palmer, whether you relate to Sam, who's being bullied and maybe he got bullied for something outside of what he's being bullied, um, for. So I think that's why, I mean, you know, what's really, um, rewarding for me is when I have people write to me on social media. And there's a grandmother in Texas uh, recently said, thank you so much for this movie. My little grandson is getting bullied because he wears a pink, he likes to wear pink. And she goes, it breaks my heart. So it's just that, that like that's rewarding to me. Or there was a gentleman who had gotten out of prison and, and reconnected with his son and he relates to it. So that's why it's, it's, it's just real people, audiences, that um, are responding mm -hmm. to, to it emotionally. I'm going to dive into something a little bit personal on myself. I don't typically do that on, on, on social media or on anything, but, but one of the things that resonated to me the much most in this movie was exactly that that you just mentioned, the, grand, the, the Palmer's grandmother. And, and, and I grew up with my mother and my grandmother. Those, are, those were the two pillars of, in my life that I am who I am because, because I'm really emotional on that right now. I don't want to get emotional. Um, okay. But um, but um, I, I, I absolutely do, love that. I also love the casting. And I, I want to talk a little bit about the, about the casting because everybody did great. I, I, also, I said, I know I only mentioned, uh, obviously, um, Justin and, 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 and uh, Ryder. Ryder, yeah. They, I think both of them were, you know, they were the folks that their the first of all focus of the movie. But June also did a great job. And, and I, don't, I forgot to turn the name uh, for the lady, but everybody did a great job. How did that the casting process came about? What, what, what input did you had? What were you there and you were telling? I like I like this one. I like this. Yeah. What, what, how did that cost, that the casting process came about? Okay. So Fisher Stevens, who is the director, mm -hmm. I met him in 2013. Uh, sorry, 2016. 
Um, and we started working together. It got on the blacklist, or maybe it was the beginning of 2017 when I first met him. But but anyway, we we um, he was attached to direct and. Um, we started going out for the Palmer and there was another actor at a certain point we were supposed to film it in 2018, but the money fell through, which I'm so, so grateful, um, which often happens. So 2019 rolled around and we lost that, that actor. They moved on to something else. And um, someone said to Fisher, what about Justin Timberlake mm -hmm. and he called me and he's like what do you think about Justin Timberlake and we both agreed he's he's a fantastic actor everything I've seen Justin in I've liked he's held his own against uh Kate Winslet Juno you know, Temple Amy Adams like I he so I've seen I, I've seen everything he's been in mm -hmm. so the script was sent um Justin's manager had read it Rick Yorn and he really liked the script a lot and he gave it to Justin Justin liked the script um obviously he had a conversation with Fisher. Um, they met one on one, and then we we met me, Justin, and Fisher, and we talked. Um, we had a, the first conversation was on the phone, and we all got along. We all saw it the same way. Then we did a table read, um, and it was just great because he has amazing instincts. And in the table read, I remember there were a couple things I bumped on. I'm like, oh, I need to fix that. And after the table read me, Justin Fisher were talking about it and those, he, he bumped on the same thing I did. And it was really cool because you just knew you were just on the same page. Um, so then he committed to doing the film and that's when, cause you really, you needed to cast obviously Palmer. Um, and so after Justin, you know, was like, I'm doing this. Um, we started, uh, he worked with Juno Temple in, mm -hmm. in Wonder Wheel and he's like, Juno's amazing. I knew Juno was amazing. So mm -hmm. she read the script. She came on to the project. Um, then we started looking for the boy. I mean, the search for the boy was, we went to the UK, we went to Canada in the United States. And finally it was down to, um, we were, we we're going to do a, uh, we did do a chemistry read with Justin and he's like, bring you know, let's have at least six boys. So um, Ryder was one of them. And it was interesting because there was another little boy we had seen that we thought, oh, he's a sure for, for Sam. And he, he, he wasn't. Uh, and the minute I met Ryder, I was like, this is Sam. And he was just very, you know, he's lovable. He's, a, he's just a real kid. He's likable. And he was very confident, but in an endearing way. And um, seeing him do the scenes with Justin, I'm like, I'm like, Ryder is Sam, especially the root beer float scene. He has an innocence. He was only seven when he did it. I think he just turned seven. And it was important for me that Sam be innocent, that this really, and there was another little boy who was very talented too, but he, for me, he lacked the innocence. Um, and also Ryder just, he just nailed it. He's just a natural and him and Justin together were just such a lovely pair. Um, and for Maggie, uh, that took a moment too. Um, and and uh, Alicia Wainwright, I, her audition, she was fantastic. I'm like, this is Maggie. I mean, we all universally agreed, the casting director and Fisher were like, this is Maggie. And Fisher had me involved in all the casting. And um, June Squibb got the script for Vivian. And I was so thrilled because June Squibb is, I mean, she's just flawless. This woman is flawless, never complains. I, I mean, I watched her on set. I was there the entire time. I mean, all these actors were amazing. Jesse Boyd, um, Stephen, who plays Daryl, uh, Wynn, who plays uh, Lucille, JD, who plays the principal. They were just so authentic and they're just so talented. Um, and that was what was important to me. What was important to Fisher, Justin, is that everything just feels very real. Like, you know, these people, you've met these people. So, and that's how the casting came together. Um, you see, I, at the time of this recording, it hasn't come out, but you already have gotten a bunch of amazing reaction from critics and, you know, people that had, you know, had the opportunity of the early screeners, screenings, to, uh, access to it. Um, where were you, at, were you expecting that, you know, this type of reaction? Um, look, you never know with people, I've always had a very positive response to the script. Um, so I knew, I mean, and I can't say this about everything I've written and, and, but I knew how strong Palmer was. I knew how good the script was and the reaction I was getting from it. 
Um, even before I even wrote it, when I would tell people the story, I carried in my head, everyone, you know, I know when I lose someone <laughs> um, and you never know. I mean, look, it, it's just everyone, there's biases that people have, whether they're going to like something or not like something. And my hope, uh, and, and I'm seeing that, that people are really responding it, responding to. It. And I said to Fisher, I said, I better cry when I watch this. There's a couple of points. I'm like, I better, you better make me cry. And I do, I know what's going to happen. And there's two, you know, two moments where I, I shed tears. And um, for me, the reward is, you know, and it's, of course, you always want all the critics to like it, but I feel like that's, you know, everyone, again, um, I'll, I'll refrain from my opinion on that, but it's more audiences because I know I've seen movies that I've absolutely loved and I read a review and I'm like, I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, um, and I'm someone who loves dramas. So um, it's very rewarding that you, you know, reached out to me and wanted to talk to me about it because you obviously felt, um, you know, connected to the story and you really obviously enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that means a lot to me. You know, I, I love, I love that. I, I mean, I absolutely know Get, you know, understand where you're, you're going with the, I, I'm a critic and I, you know, yeah. I, don't, you, I don't have any complaints about the movie, so you won't get, get any complaints. But I, but I, but I, but I but what you said about, I don't know what, I don't know what movie you saw, you saw because I like what yeah. the movie, so that's yeah. basically the reaction that, yeah. you, I understand where you're going with that yeah. reaction because it's something yeah. that I get with my colleagues all the time, you know, I don't know what movie you saw, I liked it, I think it was good, you know, you're exactly. seeing a different movie, I don't know. So it's like, I, that's, critics are critics. Me putting myself yeah. on that, I know, and I understand <laughs> yeah. how we are. So don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't worry about you it. You haven't written across your shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's this my, this army. My, this my yeah. Yeah. But I like you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, two, two more. I want to get your reactions to more things, and 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 this one is pay me being an and and an Apple fanboy, and I make basically. I have, I have my life zones on, on, on Apple, and and I, I think I, I got the email that the screener was available on the website mm -hmm. about two weeks ago, yes. and and I was like I got I got a bunch of stuff to do. like let me you know I typically don't want to watch trailers I do post them on my website but I don't watch them because I don't wanna I don't wanna get you know I wanna judge I wanna just find a product but what I see so you know what what was your I wanted to reaction two things you know what what was your reaction when you saw the final product. You know, you just said that you, you cried. So what was your, yeah. your reaction? And and then you know, from from me being being Apple fanboy, how did you react to you know getting you know the call that hey, Apple TV Plus picked up the movie, nice. So those two things. Yeah. It's it's great. Yeah, because um, uh, Sydney Kimmel Entertainment was the the company that financed it. Uh, John Panati is one of the producers, Charles Wessler, also a gentleman, uh, Daniel, who um, he has invested in movies. He, I think he invested in Motherless Brooklyn and um, as ours as well. So uh, we didn't have the distributor. We had, you know, the financier and the producers. Um, so sorry, the first question <laughs> was, um, oh, when I saw the final product. Yeah. Um, I loved it. I mean, it was shot by Tobias, uh, and I don't want to say his last name because I always screw up his last name, but he shot some of my favorite movies, um, Lone Survivor, Friday Night Lights, Dream Girls. He's, in, he's such an amazing, I, I remember when Fisher told me he's doing it, I'm like, no way. Like, I love this guy. And I got to know him and I, I, I'm honored to call him a friend because I just, I love this man. Um, but I, you know, when I first saw it and I was involved in the editing, like Fisher, I mean, I shouldn't say it, but like Fisher, um, included me in, 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 a, in a lot of the editing sessions and I'd sit there in the beginning. So it was interesting to see it being put together. Cause there's a lot that was shot that did not make it in the film. And, um, but so, you know, he's a collaborative guy, Fisher. I don't know if I'll ever have this experience where you have a director who's including you in location scouting and um, casting. And, you know, he's very, he does, he's, he, he's egoless. Um, so it was, it was fun. You know, it was, it was enjoyable. It's like a team effort or collaborative. I mean, he's, you know, he's the director. It's his final, final word. Um, but I was thrilled, you know, when I saw the final, the final film like 
there were a couple fun, you know, because they kept editing it and you'd see it and then you'd give notes. It's like a script. So, um, but I still cry, you know, it's still very emotional. I think Justin's fantastic, you know, he's just fantastic and he's such a good guy and, and Ryder, um, I mean, this little seven-year-old, him, him, I, I love seeing him and, and Justin, there's just, you know, I have my favorite scenes between the two of them that still, you know, melt my heart. Um, but I'm incredibly proud of this film and I love, you know, I feel like it picks up momentum and then you get into the third act and it really grabs hold of you. And I know, you know, when I, there were movies like Little Miss Sunshine and, mm -hmm. and Peanut Butter Falcon, and there's certain movies that I've seen or Silver Linings Playbook that after that movie is done, like I feel good. And yes, there's certain things about Palmer that are hard to watch, but I feel like ultimately when that movie's done, I felt like, wow, I, just, I felt a lot. And, mm -hmm. um, but I feel hopeful. And it's about a fan, you know, a family has come together in the most unexpected way. A man who had no self-worth, who probably would have gone down a different road if it wasn't mm -hmm. for Sam. And I just love, you know, I love the ending of it. Um, so it's, it's, I'm very proud of, very proud of that film. And um, I mean, I'm biased, but it's one of my, it's my favorite film. Um, so that's that. And when we found out Apple, so I know Fisher, there were people, they were, had screened it and Apple just, they were like, we love this. We want this. And I remember Fisher called me and he's like, what do you think of Apple? I said, I love Apple. Cause I've seen, they, I, I feel like the the films that they pick up and what they do, their TV mm -hmm. shows are very, do, do I wor use the word prestigious? Um, they just don't, you know, there's some streamers I feel like that just collect a bunch of movies and I don't feel like Apple does that. I feel like Apple's very selective in what they, what they uh, pick up and what they produce and what they release. So, um, I mean, it's one of the biggest <laughs> companies in the world and they picked up our film. They wanted our film. So it's a, it's a great honor and everyone over there has been great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I've always happened. That's, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm being a fanboy here. So I, 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 I'm not no, being objective. I, so I'm, sure. <laughs> and, um, I, and I, I agree with you with that one. I think, you know, the morning show and, and, and everything they have done show, is yeah. just so just, legit and so I, real and so out of this world in the way that they want them, you know, what they want to be seen in this industry sure. that I think Palmer, you know, sure. made a perfect fit for, for, there, you know, for the catalog of, of, of the show. Thank I'm you. completely, I'm happy that, you know, I'm happy that it was picked up. I, I was, I was really ecstatic that we were able to, you know, to produce this, this story. And I'm, and, you know, right now, you're one of, I'm gonna, I'm, put, I'm putting you on one of my favorite writers. Plus, oh, I, want, I want more, I want to see more, more stuff from you. So if you have anything else that you want to maybe give us a little hint, we'll, you can put it in here. But if not, you can let me know later. But you know, uh, congratulations from Palmer and and, and and I wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, you're lovely. This has been great. And thank you so much. It means a lot to me.